here's a couple words of caution if you're going to remove your transmission fluid pan. <laughs> One thing is when you pull that little plug to drain it, look at that, it does not get it all out. So just be very careful when you lower it down that you don't tip it or you're going to get transmission fluid all over yourself or all over the floor. The other warning is make sure you put a large drip pan underneath the transmission. You probably won't even be able to catch it all with a pan because it's going to drip all the way from the front of the transmission to the back of the transmission for probably the next six hours. So literally, I'm going to let this just drip away overnight, and I'll come back tomorrow and replace the filter in the pan. But right away, when I pull the pan, I'm looking at this, and I say, what's this weird blue color? All these gaskets are supposed to be black. And upon closer inspection, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, look at this. That's silicone. Someone took and put silicone on the gasket. Now, I don't know if they put it on a new gasket hoping it would enhance the seal or whether they had an old gasket and wanted to reuse it, but that's an absolute no-no. You put these seals on dry, totally dry. You do not use any RTV. RTV is the absolute worst because once the oil gets in there, it just wicks right by the RTV particularly if you don't get a perfect seal, and that's often the case on the bottom of transmission. RTV, by the way, is only good if the two mating surfaces are absolutely, and I'm going to say absolutely clean of any oil products, and that means microscopically clean. So I see all these mechanics slapping RTV and silicone sealant on everything, and if the surfaces aren't perfectly clean, this is what's going to happen, just like this. We have a pan gasket on the transmission that's just been leaking fluid all over the ground. So in a way, that kind of makes me happy because I can take this pan, clean all the RTV off this edge, and get a new gasket and put it on, and I think I've solved the, probably 95% of my leak problem. I mentioned yesterday that if you can, let that transmission drip overnight. Be sure and remove the filter because quite a bit of fluid stays in that filter. You can see here I dropped the filter onto the pan and this is what's left the next day when I come back and see how much fluid is dripped out of the transmission. Now over here I've got the excess that dripped out of the torque converter that I drained out last night too. I drained most of the torque converter out and then left this pan underneath and it continued to drip overnight. So this is a real good reason when you're doing a transmission fluid change. Uh, don't be in a hurry. One of the advantages in draining these older automatic transmissions is they did put a drain plug in the torque converter. You do have to rotate the engine until that drain plug is located right there in that cut out the bell housing. But I removed that plug, drained it, and then I continued to let it drip overnight. I have to admit, when I realized that most of the leak was coming out of the seal gasket on the pan, I thought the pan was going to be deformed because I've seen this so many times. I didn't think it was going to be because somebody gooped the entire gasket with a silicone sealant. <laughs> That's amazing. You can see what happened here. It just made this a smooth, very slick surface. This is supposed to be, you know, three ridges to help seal this up against that smooth bottom side of the transmission. What I thought I was going to find was a problem with over torquing the pan bolts. And what happens when you over torque the pan bolts, these stops get tweaked and it allows this part of the pan to over crush the rubber gasket. Now here's the rubber gasket, the new one, that's going to go on dry, no sealant whatsoever. But before you do that, you need to inspect these stops. These are stops that go up and hit the transmission to prevent you from over tightening this lip onto the gasket. If you over tighten that, it will squish it. I've actually seen this torn because the pan was severely over tightened. So before you put the pan back on, you want to make sure these tabs are not deformed by siding down and making sure that they haven't been bent over. You follow me? If they've been bent over, that means this has been over tighten. Also look at the bolt holes. If the bolt holes have been pushed upwards, you want to get something to back it like a heavy socket and a punch and tap on those to flatten those holes out. 
The holes on this one look okay, but this is how I check the stops. I turn the pan upside down and see how it rocks. Now, I'm looking down this side and every one of these tabs looks pretty straight. It doesn't look like it's bent. But if I put this side down, watch what happens here. See? It's rocking. And if I look at it over here, I can see this one's been bent that way. So what I'll do is I'll take a pair of pliers and I'll bend that up, oh, maybe a little bit too much, and then I'll once again check it. Still rocking a little bit. Okay, all the tabs are fairly straight. There's no rock to the pan. Now we're ready to install it. I'll go ahead and get the gasket in place. Since there's lots of videos out there on changing transmission fluid, I'm not going to go through all the other details. But I just wanted to show you this particular tip with the pan. If you have been frustrated not being able to get your gasket to seal properly. And once again, never use RTV on these type of rubber gaskets. I hope you found these tips helpful and be sure and visit my website if you need parts that will help you fix the leaks in your own automatic transmission.